Vice Chair of Program Operations for USA Swimming, and I want to say welcome. Glad you're here. We had a fun morning, uh, a couple of really, really good races this morning, and we're looking for more of the same uh, for tomorrow with our junior athletes. But before we get to that, this is the meeting for the Open Water 5K National yes. meeting. Okay. So let me tell you who we have for the jurors, and they are basically the same people we had uh, today since they will be back uh, Sunday. Uh, the coach is uh, Catherine Vogt. The official is Matt Wilson, and the athlete is Chip Peterson. That is for the technical jury. Eligibility jury, uh, the coach will be Bruce Gemmel. The official is Mike Murphy, and the athlete is Eva Fabian. Those people were also on the juries today, but thank God we didn't have to convene any juries. Okay? And the likelihood that we'd have to convene one Sunday is probably de minimis also, but uh, you never know. So for those people who were willing and agreed to serve, I, I thank you very, very much. I now give you our meat referee, Pam Wilson. Good afternoon. So many of this, you this morning. Welcome. Um, sorry for the late start, but as you know, we just got done with the women's race and hurried, raced up here as soon as we could. Um, starting water temperatures. They were awesome today. We um, were a little above 68 for the men's race and actually a little above 70, I think it was, for the women's race. So we are not anticipating in wetsuits tomorrow because the air temperature was actually a little warmer today, so it should heat the water up a little bit. We will be taking the temperature two hours prior to the start of the race. We're following FINA's um, guidelines because they're a little more specific than the USA guidelines. We'll go out there and take them two hours before the men's race and two hours before the women's race. In, at the event that we're really close, but maybe not quite at 68 degrees, we'll go back out there an hour and a half beforehand before each of the race time starts and take them again. And, uh, we'll post it up at the check-in area so you guys will all know what's going on and what to expect. Um, so wetsuits. I think everybody's gotten all the communications that's, that has gone out. Um, I hope you've read it over thoroughly. Like I said, I'm not expecting it. The only change, the additional I've changed since the, some of the information has gone out um, is that you are allowed to wear two suits and the, the reason is for um, to prevent chafing and so that you can like roll them down as soon as you get out of the water. The caveat to that is the underneath suit cannot be another technical suit. It has to be just your basic um, training suit or just like a regular swimsuit. The other thing too is if you do start off with those two suits on, you cannot, if you get too hot in the water, take that wetsuit off and finish in whatever suit you have on underneath. That's not the intention. The intention is just to really make you more comfortable. So, and we will be videotaping the start, so we'll know what you have on. If you've had a wetsuit on over, we'll know when you get out that you've taken it off. Besides seeing, seeing it float about. <laughs> the gear, so um, we've talked about wetsuits. If we're, hopefully we'll be running a regular technical suit race. We'll be checking those suits in the morning to make sure that they have the FINA stamp on them. They shouldn't come past the shoulders. They can go down to the ankles no higher, you know, not up the neck or anything. No zippers on the back, pretty basic. Um, there's a two cap limit to how many caps you're wearing. In the case that we would have a wetsuit event, you will be given a cap that will be numbered. You have to start with that cap on. It does not mean that you have to finish with it, so, but you do have to start with it. Any questions? Great. The crafts that'll be on the um, the watercrafts that'll be on the water tomorrow will actually we're gonna have four rubbery boats tomorrow. We should three. Sunday. <laughs> three to four referee boats tomorrow. That'll circle the course with you. Yeah. Pam we'll, Sunday. Sorry. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Wrong meeting. Sunday. Saturday and Sunday we'll have three or four. Yes. Okay, we definitely have four for Sunday, thank you. So we'll have the four referees circling, then we'll have three um, officials on, they're kind of like little bicycles on pontoons at three of the turns. The fourth turn, the official will actually be on land. And then we'll have safety craft, craft out, um, a couple of motorized safety um, craft.
aircraft out along the course, and then, of course, um, paddle boarders and kayaks for the um, EMTs, and we'll discuss that more later. Slipstreaming. Not allowed off the rough boats or any of the boats. And slip stream one another as long as you're not interfering with the swimmer that you're slip streaming off of. Um, interference calls. If it's, a, it's if it's just a um, depending on how egregious it is, it'll either be a yellow or a red. So on how intentional it is, if it's extremely intentional, it'll go red. If it's not, then it'll go yellow. You can get two yellows. The second yellow is a red and you're um, asked to leave the course. If you receive a red, you're asked to leave the course immediately. Jewelry and watches. Don't, please don't wear them. Uh, fingernails and toenails, they will all be checked as you're checking in. Um, and we'll have fingernail clippers and toenail clippers out there so that if, if the officials feel like they're too long, you will be asked to clip them. And a really good um, way to judge it is if you rub your finger like this, if you can feel a nail, we're going to ask you to clip it. If it's shorter than that, you're going to be okay. <laughs> Start times. Report to the registration area no later than 45 minutes prior to the start of the race. So an 8 o'clock start for the women, so 7.15, and a 9.30 start for the men, so 8.45. At that, at the check-in area, you'll um, receive your packet and you get your race number. You'll receive a little card. Mark, do you happen to have those cards with you today? Well, many of you probably saw them today. Um, the little card, and you'll be, it's a card with your name and your club and your number on it. You'll show that at each station and as you get numbered, you'll also need it for the roll call because you will hand that in and that's a kind of our indicator to make sure that those athletes are, are entering the water. Um, you'll also report your suit manufacturer, manufacturer and the model number and we'll, um, we'll go through a suit check. We only have, uh, we're, it, because we have the possibility of wetsuits being used this weekend, we have four officials who will be checking those um, wetsuits if necessary, which we're not expecting. Um, Pre-race meeting underneath that tent tented area will occur 15 minutes prior to the race. I or your uh, meet referee will tell you about um, any course conditions, we'll tell you the water temperature, we'll go over the race, um, you know, the start and the finish, we'll go over protocols if you want to withdraw er, during the race. Um, and then we'll do, after that, we'll do an introduction of athletes um, five minutes prior to the start of the race. And that's where we do, that our admin rep, um, Mark McCall is our admin rep for the weekend. He will go through, um, our announcer will go through and call each athlete. You'll come down with your hands like this so we can see your numbers across the back of your hands, the caps that you have on and your suits that you have on, and that will be videotaped. And then afterwards, after that's all done, you'll be asked to, at Mark's discretion, you know, or the call, he'll be talking to the referee out on the water. He'll let you know when to enter the water. The, um, Start and finish procedures. So there is one change from today for the rest of the weekend. We will be using a rope start. We'll have somebody on the dock um, holding one end of the rope and somebody, um, a rope attached to one of the official boats. So you'll need to be hanging on to that rope from, you need to be in front of it so you're hanging on to it from behind, uh, behind you. Yes? You said the same for the 10K, but today it was, wasn't like this. Right, and, so we're was, uh, no, and, and was very dangerous for the girls. I didn't see the, the start of the men's race, but it was very dangerous. We are lucky that nobody was injured. So mm -hmm. please change the start procedure. Yeah, so well, the rope will allow our boats to get a little farther out, and we're going to have a very long rope. So, yeah. yeah. Not like today, please. No. No. Finish procedures. Um, as you're coming through the course, there the last turn after the last turn, the fourth turn, um, 
in those that will be an orange buoy as you're coming into the shooted area there'll be a buoy that's yellow that you'll pass on your left hand shoulder side and then come into that shoot shoot area as you go underneath you need to hit that pad after you hit it please don't um, stand there but move along so you're not impeding any of the athletes that are coming in behind you withdrawal procedures if at any point during the race that you feel like you need to withdraw please raise your hand yell at us um, any of the, the lifeguards will be watching that are out on the paddle boats the turn dudges the referees will all be watching if you need help that will help you we'll get a boat over to you to help you get out of the water if you come off because you're just near land and anybody that has come off the water the first place they need to go is to the admin area who in the admin area will be seat will be up where you're checking in and you'll need to see Mark McCall so that we can get count if you're withdrawn we are counting for all those swimmers we know where you are um, Inclement weather, weather and contingencies, if we have um, any problems, we'll do like five short blasts and one long blast on the air horn. And that means immediately head towards land. There's something which we had a beautiful day today and that's the rest of the weather's expected to be beautiful all weekend, so we're not anticipating that. But. Recognition ceremony for both races will be held after the men's are done, the men's race is done. So race day schedule for the women is, is a 715 um, deadline that you have to check in by. You'll still have time until that 745 when the, um, when the final rest of referee gives instructions to finish going through that area, getting your numbers, getting the, your nails checked and your suits checked. But you do have to check in by 715. 745 will be the final referee's instructions underneath that tenant area with the 7.55 roll call, and then an 8 a.m. Uh, women's 5K start. The men will go second on Sunday. So it's a 9.15, um, that should be 8.45. Should be 8.45 that you need to check in by. And then a 9.15, um, Final referees, instructions, 925 roll call, and 930 5K start awards immediately following the men's race. Finish and timing chips. I think Jason is probably still down at the beach, so this will be a time chip event. Um, you'll be getting those chips as you go through that registration. You'll be wearing one at each arm. Um, they will be, you You guys will decide how tight you want them and they'll, they'll snap them and cut the little ends off for you. You may use tape to go over them if you feel more comfortable and they're more secure on. During um, the race, we'll be providing live uh, PA updates and a webcast. Doping control. Do you have the... Uh, Language that I'm supposed to. Are you aware of the issues there were today with doping control? No. But can we talk about them? Can you come and let me know after the meeting? We'll talk about it offline. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I want to be aware if there's anything going on. Oh. This event is subject to the testing under um, USADA and FINA rules, so please note that all minors must have a representative with them going through doping control. Thank you. The course. I don't think um, we have. Is Ron here? I am. No. Ron can Jeremy is still down at the beach, so we're going to have Ron, yeah. from our, one of our local race directors, tell you about the course a little bit. Sure, we have uh, we, we do have a map, right? Yeah. Do you want do you want the map? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, okay. So uh, I imagine most of you had a chance to see the course today, and it has it's not going to physically change uh, for tomorrow, other than the fact that there'll be no feeding station, which is right here. 
So this is South Beach, where we're all going to be starting. It's our, it's our home base. <coughs> and for those of you who haven't been there, you're going to park in parking lot five. The race will start. Uh, the finish structure is right in here. Oh, yeah, that's better. The finish structure is right in here. And, uh, and the, the last turn, which is green, or is it yellow? I can't remember. Yeah. It's, green. it's yellow. It's yellow. It's yellow. It's yellowish. yellowish. Okay. yellowish. We'll, we'll, so uh, it's going to be uh, right here. So basically, the start rope is going to be just short, just uh, in front of the structure um, and not too far out. The course is actually um, kind of condensed and wide. So if, if you look at this picture, it's not to scale. It's more wide now than it is long, uh, which is nice when they, from the start. The, do we have the measurements from the start to the? Yeah, 6.30. 6.30 for the whole length. From the start, is it this 180 here? No, that was, I don't know exactly what yeah, it is. So uh, from the start to the first turn, which are going to be large <coughs> triangular, uh, and I believe today they were orange, orange uh, uh, buoys, and they are here and here. Uh, you're going to take a, uh, this, so the distance between these is wide. It says 201, and, and this looks like it's cut off 305. up here. 305. on the top. So it's roughly, so 305 up on the top, and then the long stretch on the back coming down, and on your way back down, there are two green buoys um, about mid-course, and those are for your sighting, and I believe they can go to the, the right or the left of those. Yeah, those uh, are they're, optional. They're just there for you to just sight up to your final buoy, which is going to be, of course, down at the end of the lake. Right turns, right turns, green buoy again on the way back. We're talking about three complete laps. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the turn for home, which is the, uh, the green or yellow buoy. It's a yellow round buoy. That's yellow round buoy, right and it's very there. distinctive compared to the others. And it's also slightly off course uh, that mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take you to your left. Yeah, you have to do a left hand turn. So the, mm -hmm. um, all the orange buoys are right hand turns. And that last one to take you into the chute is a left hand turn. And it's about 150 meters into the chute. Mm -hmm. The chute is very wide here. Um, and, uh, and basically it's going to take you through the chute into the structure. The structure is a U-shaped uh, docking section. Once you get in and touch the pad, we ask that you kind of quickly move, maneuver your, uh, your way through the structure. There are ladders to climb out. And then we ask you to climb back in the water, not dive, because at that point you're not in shallow water, but you're not in diving depth either. And we have a chute that's in the water. It's made of flags, and we want you to stay within that chute, not dive out and just walk to the shore. We want you to walk through the chute so that you can be uh, met at the, on the beach by doping control, and uh, basically so we can also count our swimmers out of the water in a correct fashion. And at that area, too, you'll get your um, transponders for your right. chips to cut off. Also. We'll cut off the chips there. Um, I think that's basically it. Uh, uh, Three laps today, uh, three laps on, on Friday, on Sunday, on Sunday, on Sunday. On, on Sunday. Uh, and uh, the feeding station, which was there today, we're probably going to remove it. Uh, so those of you who want to sit there, and, and it's a good point to watch, you're welcome to watch in this area, it's really nice, but the feeding station is probably going to be gone, um, just because we don't want to get it damaged, but if there's anything else. The, the lake itself was beautiful today, uh, it was glass-like most of the time. Wind does come up. I'm surprised on a warm day like today that it didn't get windier than it did. It could. So that's something to be aware of. That at times we do get some really strong winds coming off the dam. And those winds move across the lake from the dam to the, to the bottom of the lake. Um, we've been lucky uh, in the last couple of days that it's been very, very nice out there. Can you speak to the current? Oh, okay. Well, there is actually no current in this lake unless the wind picks up, in which case there is a nice top current. It'll pull you along the lake. It is pushing there you. any a little bit from the dam being on? No, there isn't. The dam, um, the dam is letting water out. It's funny, if you were here two days ago, the, the water rose two day, two, about two feet in the two days. But you won't feel any current. The water that comes from the dam comes in at the bottom of the lake, and it doesn't really create any noticeable current. So, okay. But if the wind is blowing, you will feel a nice current on the top, like I said, moving you from the dam. Uh, from the, the, the dam side to the bottom side. Um, the water itself is extremely clean. It has been rated as drinkable. I mean, there are ducks swimming around it, so it's uh, debatable if you want to drink it, but it is actually very clean. It's the water we drink in Santa Clarita. So uh, it's very clean, and the temperatures you guys have already discussed. So I'm trying to think of anything else that uh, is of major concern. <laughs> really just, um, just that we do ask that when you get into the chute, that you get out and you, and you kind of follow a nice procedure getting out of the water so we can count you out of the water correctly. Marine life. Um, there is bass in this lake and uh, some other fish. Uh, the bass, we have never had a person getting bitten by a fish, but uh, you guys, I think you guys are moving too fast for that. But there is some marine life. There are some geese that today were just on the course. Um, uh, but uh, so other than that, we're fine. Restrooms, we have two sets of restrooms. Um, they're just adjacent to the facility. They're a short walk. 
um, and there's, those are also changing rooms. There is, you might see a bathroom on the, um, the back side of the, uh, of the tent village there. That is for the drug testing facility, so we don't ask that you do not go use that bathroom or even go over to that area. Um, it's, as you know, it's extremely sunny and bright, so sunscreen is, is advised and temperature we discussed, and depth. This is a very deep lake, uh, it, it, even though it's, this isn't even the lake, this is the lagoon. If you guys get a chance, you should go see our lake, it's massive. Uh, it's above the dam. Uh, but the lake here is about 70 feet in, uh, in the deeper areas, in the, in, the, in the mean area, most of the area you're swimming in. So it is deep. If you drop things like goggles, you're not gonna get them back. <laughs> we had some official loose glasses today. And uh, right at the, uh, even at the dock, at the, um, at the finished structure, they're not coming back. So, um, any, any questions about the lake or the, or the course? It's extremely simple. In fact, when we're done today, if you want to take a walk over, if you just walk along the beach here, if you don't want to move your car, you'll, you'll start to see the, the feeding station and, the, and you can see all the buoys from just a short walk along the beach from, from where we are. No questions? Terrific. All right, I just want to thank, um, Ron and Jeremy, who's not here today, they've been run, they have put together a fantastic meet for us and they've been really great to work with. So if we can just give them a round of applause. Oh, thank you. One other thing. We, we do have hospitality out there, and that's for you guys. Uh, I, I think some of the uh, swimmers and coaches and parents were uh, like, oh, should I take this? Absolutely. We have water, we have bagels and snacks. It's for officials, it's for athletes, it's for coaches, it's even for parents. There's no snack bar because it's not a big spectator sport. Um, so if you're hungry or you're watching, if you need food, we've got it. Just come and take it, and uh, that's, that's all there for you. Okay, I'd like to introduce um, Joaquin. Um, I'm sorry? Falcon, yes. It's not Tracy or Dion, but he's, he was out there with us today and was a great help to us, too. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Castaic. Uh, just want to let you know that I'm here in charge of the Lake Lifeguard staff. If any of you have questions or needs, um, please contact me. I do have a race radio with me. I do have a park radio with me. I have contact with all of the lifeguards as well as the fire department. And um, real quick, there's going to be 12 paddlers on the course. Uh, depending on the course itself, I may just have them stationed out there or I may have them trailing. I do have personnel on land, and I do have a number of vessels that will be out there, one for media, and one for transports, and one just strictly for medical. Okay. Everybody is USLA certified. Anybody wearing red shorts like these, they're all USLA certified. Uh, majority of them are EMTs, all Red Cross, lifeguard, CPR, EMR trained. Uh, response time, uh, if you were here earlier today, once we called fire, it was about five minutes. Uh, they were in the park. Uh, they were assisting with uh, one of the calls. Um, so response time is almost um, instant. Okay. <clears throat> There's lifeguard staff throughout the race course. If anything's happening, if it, uh, one of the swimmers having a problem, just flag us down. Um, Get with one of the paddlers. I do have a race boat, uh, a lifeguard boat out there. Um, I can radio to him. He'll make contact with the paddler. We'll put the swimmer in the in, in the the boat. We'll get them to the shore. I I do want to discuss an issue that I was having today. Uh, swimmers dropping out don't disappear. You need to be medically cleared. Um, water's kind of chilly. I want to make sure that you are okay. You know, if you're a minor, I would like a parent there. Uh, before I release you in the field uh, because we do need to check you out it's not one of those oh it's okay it's okay and, and you disappear I need to make sure that everything's okay and once you're cleared then we can release you back to your coaches or what have you but I do want anybody that is dropping out of the race you are coming to um, the start finish to get your your uh, timer clipped off after you do that or before you do that, please see me and we'll get you cleared and we'll have you uh, going on your way. So you, go, you need to see both the lifeguards and Mark McCall. So probably Joaquin earlier if you're having issues so you can get medically cleared and then Mark or admin. EMTs, there's at least minimum of six of us throughout the race. 
there's two AEDs on site. One will be on land in the truck, one will be on the boat. Okay, so if ever, if ever we needed any of that, it's available. Uh, hospitals, or our, our ambulance location, they come along with fire department and the response times are five to 10 minutes. Okay, there's no delays there. Hospital locations, Henry Mayo, and that's about five miles away. So we have everything really close to us. Uh, shade can be limited. There's a number of trees behind the area. Uh, if you're showing up early, uh, please grab one of those because if not, it's going to be really hot. If you don't, uh, lots of sunblock, lots of water. Uh, I don't want to do, uh, have to also worry about heat related uh, illnesses versus you know the cold related in the water. Um, communications, I, like I said, I have uh, radio with the staff and I have radio at the park. So there isn't any lapse in communication. Okay, uh, and the safety craft, two vessel or two vehicles on the uh, on land that may either be stationed or roaming around, and three lifeguard boats in the water. One is just for media, one is for medicals, the other one is for transport. Uh, any questions, comments? Okay, good luck. Enjoy. Thank you. Guys. We have Bryce Elzer from uh, USA Swimming to discuss the selection procedures. Yeah, for Sunday it's, pre it's pretty quick. Um, the top two men, top two women will be selected to compete for the World Championship team. Once we uh, fill and complete the World Championship team, we'll move down the selections for uh, WUGS, Yuana Champs, um, and the junior team. So uh, if you have any questions for selection, please see me. I will be issuing the selections on Sunday. So thank you. Thank you.